Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer. This guide is going to be covering a very niche tactic called minion blocking. So first up, what is minion blocking? Minion blocking is hindering your own minion's progress to stop them coming to lean as fast. This can be done for various reasons. The main reason is as shown below. If you want the first minion wave to be towards your end of the map for safety, near your turret, you can block the minions and safely farm a little deeper towards your end of the map, and of course a little closer to your turret. Another reason is to stop your minion wave from pushing so far into the enemy territory, and snowballing heavily. This can stall the minions from bunching up for a few key seconds, which means that the minions will push towards your side. Another viable reason could be stalling your minions late game on your side of the map if you're winning or losing. For example, if winning, you can stall your minions deep in your own side of the map, so your enemy has to go further out and take risks to get them. If losing, you can stall your own minions closer to your turrets so that they'll have to go up a little bit further, so the enemy will have to go into the little bit of map control you do have and you can try and make a pick. This basically forces your enemy to go deeper on both regards. Now, a lot of people call bullcrap on some of my tactics and quick tips. That's fine. So I feel I must show a basic example. I'm not going to show them all that I just mentioned, but just one. The niche one. Look at the example below. I'm only body blocking these minions with Blitzcrank. It doesn't look like much and I'm going to hand it to you. And it isn't. But look. The casters don't get to lean as fast, nor do the melees, meaning that they don't bunch up as fast, I'm ruining all of their pathings, meaning that the enemy casters have an extra 1 or 2 auto attacks. Doesn't sound like much, but it is. Look below. The wave is now pushing towards me. Like I know you think such a small thing doesn't affect it, but it does. It's a small advantage but will mean if both lanes are last hitting perfectly, it will eventually push towards you. Look below, it's all there. If you want the wave and minion waves pushing towards you on a defensive start game lane, like say, Vladimir top, you can do this. A slight push on your side will mean it will snowball eventually. Just an example of one of the small knock-on effects. Now into the tactic. There are a few ways you can do this. The first one that is available to everyone and is the one I've shown below. You can use your champion to run at the line of the minions and attempt to break their minion pathing. This can be harder for smaller champions with a smaller model, but is still possible to some extent. As seen in the example I just mentioned, Blitzcrank. I'm running left and right in front of the minions, hitting S to body block them, so I ruin their pathing in some sort of way. It's really up to you which way you do it, but the main criteria is just running up and stopping them as much as possible. The easiest pathing to break is the caster creeps, the minion creeps are quite difficult. But it doesn't matter, because this is good. The caster creeps are the most important ones to break anyway. And do remember, in bot lane, two people can do this, not just one. But for the most part, this is only viable if you know your jungler's on the other end and they've already got help. If you have to help your jungler take the camp, do. Do not do this tactic over it. There are also a few examples of champions that can break the pathing considerably with abilities. These champions with examples are Anivia's W, The Wall. If you wall the middle, you can block the minions at their spawn, forcing them around the side, obviously severely breaking their pathing and timing into lane. Trundles E, The Pillar. Much the same as Anivia's Wall. This works well to completely block and force the minions to path around the turret rather than through them. You're gonna have to use your character model as well, so look below. Thresh's W, The Lantern. This is a surprising complete block. Look at the position I'm in, look at it carefully. It has to be perfectly duplicated like shown below. Use the lantern and Thrash's champion model together to get a full block. The lantern alone is not enough. Heimerdinger's Q, the turrets. Kind of. 
This is a on-off tactic. It works well to a certain degree, I suppose. I can make it go all the way around. I can do a complete block around the turret, but I only pulled it off once. And I couldn't duplicate that success, so... It kind of works, just not amazingly. It still does work to some degree, just it's quite hard to pull off. I would only redirect the path slightly, which I don't know if it's worth it for you, but I felt like I should mention it. This tactic can also work for top and bot lane, but is a little harder to pull off. And simply put, not as effective. The example below shows me doing it with Trundle's pillar, because obviously Trundle would only really be top lane out of all of them. I have to use my body and the pillar to redirect the minions. Again, it's not as effective, it's not just as good, but it still kind of works. And that's it for the quick tip guys. For the most part you're only going to be using the body block one, but you know, if you have these champions, it's a decent advantage for free. And that's it guys, I hope you like it. If you like it, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. If you like me sub, and if you think the video is useful and awesome, you can also share it. And that's it guys, have an absolutely amazing day.